video, we're going to look at a case study of high DHEA, high testosterone, and low cortisol. And I use this case to illustrate how you can understand what's going on with your hormones by understanding the different enzymes and things that control those enzymes. So keep in mind that you do have to look at this on an individual basis because there are so many different things that can influence the enzymes that then control the overall levels of hormones. So this is just an illustration of how you can go about that, and hopefully it gives you a better understanding. My name is Dr. Taranella, and if you're interested in things like this related to hormones, health, nutrition, etc., click on that like button, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get more videos like this one. All right, let's look at a case of high DHEA, low cortisol, and a female. So the first thing we want to look at when we're trying to solve why one hormone level is high or low is to look at the enzymes that control the hormone levels and what things control those individual enzymes. So you can think of these enzymes like basically either, you know, a dam to a river, or you can think of it like a train track where you can kind of control which directions the trains are going. So some things can make hormones go in one direction like this one, or it can make the hormones go in a different direction, like down this way. So the different enzymes that control these hormone levels can be manipulated by different things. Now that doesn't necessarily mean they're being changed in absolute terms, but in relative terms. So if you have, you know, something that's stimulating this enzyme, a little bit more than it's stimulating these enzymes, you're going to get more uh, directionally going this way and vice versa. So that's what we have to look at when we're looking at why hormones are high or low is what things are predominantly in the body kind of pushing things in different directions. So let's look at an example of high DHEA. This person had high DHEA and high relative testosterone levels as well. And they also had, they also had low progesterone and low cortisol, which is right here. Uh, both of these here are cortisol and cortisone. So what would be uh, doing that? Well, generally speaking, you might need to decrease the activity of this enzyme somewhat and somehow get this hormone here all the way down over into DHEA and then into testosterone. So let's look at an actual example of this. Uh, we'll see some lab, you're going to see some lab tests here. So here's the actual results. And as I said, this person had a high DHEA level and that DHEA is probably being pushed into make more testosterone. And she also has a relatively high free testosterone as well. Now it's not outside the reference range, but just from you know, looking at a lot of these, this is relatively high compared to most, which suggests probably a low sex hormone binding globulin as well. And it could be that the testosterone itself is lowering the sex hormone binding globulin. But then the question we want to ask is why is the DHEA high? And why is that DHEA preferentially, uh, at least from what we can tell, being pushed into testosterone? Why is it not being pushed into estrogen or something else? Now here is her estradiol, which is not that high, but relatively speaking for female, this is somewhat high, um, and especially the free testosterone side. So, and then overall, you know, this DHEA level is not extremely high. There's definitely people with much higher, but for her age, it was, you know, slightly high. And so we just want to look at, you know, what could be driving this process. So she did have a lot of different symptoms going going on, some fatigue, acne, things that, you know, one would expect with high androgens as well. She also had some digestive issues, but one thing that seemed to stick out more than others that was probably critical for what was going on with her was she had chronic alcohol consumption, you know, not a, like a once a week kind of thing. It was very regular more often than not. And what you see with chronic alcohol is that you can decrease, you can decrease the activity of this three beta hydroxy steroid dehydrogenase. Now, now, there's lots of other things that can also influence that. And you might think, well, if all of these are decreased, how do you end up with more testosterone? Well, turns out that uh, some of these enzymes are actually stimulated by alcohols. So 17 beta hydroxy steroid dehydrogenase can actually turn this DHEA into androstenediol, diol, and then it can also be turned through the same enzyme, 17 beta hydroxy steroid dehydrogenase into testosterone. So in her case, yes, all of these production was inhibited, but because there's an increased activity 
of this enzyme, drawing it into androstene diol, you're getting a relative uh, buildup here, which then will eventually, once the levels get high, is going to kind of push this forward, even though there's still that inhibition going there. So directionally, you're still getting that activity. And so you're getting some of this pregnenolones being shuttled away from progesterone and even 17 hydro uh, hydroxy progesterone as well, we would think would be low. We did not actually check that, so we can't tell. And previously we did check cortisol levels, which were also low, which we would expect. So it's basically all being kind of shifted in this direction. So in this case, eliminating alcohol would obviously be helpful, but what else can she do? Something that may be helpful in modulating some of these things would be to take some phytoestrogens and maybe even uh, estrogen in general, but not too much estrogen. Too much estrogen may not be good, but some phytoestrogens like things from soy plants or actually some direct soy isoflavones would be helpful in decreasing the activity of this 17 beta hydroxy steroid dehydrogenase right here. That would basically slow down the conversion of DHEA into androstene diol and then kind of reduce the buildup here. That estrogen would also increase her sex hormone binding globulin, which could further decrease free testosterone. So with all these different things and scenarios, it really does depend on what the overall environment is. Each case needs to be taken separately. You can't really say, oh, my DHEA is high. What, you know, what one thing can I do? You kind of have to look at it in the context of all these other hormones to get a real clear picture on where the problem is. So you can do these tests through blood. You can do it through urine, but understanding where each of these are really helps you understand which enzymes are being affected. And then you can kind of look at some lifestyle things or different herbs and things that can help shift enzymes activities and shift those hormones that are driving those excess or deficient states. So hopefully that gives you a better understanding of the things that can go on with your hormone levels and some of the things that you can do to control them. If you do have questions about this video, please drop it in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer it. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you again next time.